I V M. Kripaya dhyan dijiye. The language used on the podcast may not be fit for consumption. We warn you, tread carefully. But listen, yar, don't be so conservative. Very excited because Cock and Bull is about to start. Not that excited because Amit Doshi and Silvery, who run this show for me, well, they basically have lowered the timing earlier and earlier. Uh, when we started the lockdown, they wanted evenings and nights. I brought them to nine thirty in the morning, which I had to push back to nine forty-five because I need my uh, expert Maya, who's in class. It's a long story to come and set up everything for me because I'm a medieval man. But my rant is not that. My rant is Joe Rogan. I just saw saw a podcast of the hundred million dollar man where he discusses. And this serious podcast is actually discussing how to survive a bear attack. Uh, I was like, really? That's, that's the point of the day. So a grizzly bear, eight hundred pounds, attacks you. He mentions you wear your backpack, which is filled with things. You go into fetal position, and then he, he'll attack you, or she'll attack you. Most likely, it's a female bear. I'll explain that later. Uh, but they'll probably break the arm, leg, chew parts of you, but you'll live. That's the good news. I was, I was, I didn't know how to react to that, but I thought in Malba Hill, South Mumbai context, what do we have? See, I don't have any grizzly bears. The only predator we have is the building society uncle. That shoot, all right. That guy is very dangerous. So if you see this guy, get into fetal position and just stay like that till he devours you or does whatever he wants with you. It'll be an arm, a leg, or a testicle, but nothing more. But remember, there's no way you can escape some pain from the building society. Shoot. The B S C. Or not to be confused with the other struggling fraternity of ours. Beta, did you know seventy nine percent of all scientists in NASA are Indian only? देखो, India में tax सिर्फ middle class भरती है. Everyone is just enjoying free, यार. आजकल के youngsters are only interested in partying and enjoying. उनको देश की पढ़ी ही नहीं है. बेटा, तुम बस शादी कर लो. उसके बाद तो you can enjoy life like anything. I will tell you what this country needs. This country needs fifteen years of dictatorship. That is the only, the only way to become a superpower. See the Chinese, how much they've progressed. सुनो, so तुमने ये WhatsApp forward देखा? So what's common between all of these statements? They're all absolutely rubbish. Fake WhatsApp forwards that spread like wildfire and statements that defy any logic. They are here to debunk them all. Where are family WhatsApp groups? Worst nightmare. Where what happens when you read a book? Basically, we are just a bunch of guys who want to cut through the bullshit of everyone saying this, how it won't be true. So that the next time someone confidently squeezes out some WhatsApp or Twitter BS, you can look them dead in the eye and go, Uncle. Please sit. So join me, Joel, and me, Tushar, every Mondays for a fresh new episode of Uncle. Please sit. And now let's welcome the great. Uh, before I forget the name of his show, story tellers and story sellers. I wrote it, Vinita, so I don't screw it up. <laughs> because that's the only good thing in this podcast. You should promote the guy properly. Yes, uh, Vinita uh, Kanobar has been away from us for some time, but he's back. And uh, very opinionated man. He started right. Politics moved towards left, and now is somewhere in the center. Absolutely. Uh, so we'll get we'll get more out of him later. But uh, the chairman of this entire board is Silvery, a young twenty-two year old, twenty-three, twenty-four. How old are you actually? I'm twenty-eight. Damn you! You're not twenty-eight. Five years. Twenty-three when we started in March. Bugger on twenty-eight. Uh, whatever you do, I have one story I want to do, guys, and that's the Djokovic controversy. So you tell yeah. me when you're ready for some yeah. sport. But uh, just I wanted to kind of mention why Joe. I, I'd like to make an excuse for Joe Rogan before we kind of go ahead. Oh my God! Hundred million dollars to tell me how a grizzly bear will kill me. I, I, Excuse I me. Do, dude, how many? What's the chances of a grizzly bear killing you? Cyrus, think about it this way, okay? You're doing right now two hours a week, and we st- still talk about nonsense to a great degree, right? He does eight hours a week. <laughs> There's not enough nonsense to go around. Huh? You, yeah. have, you have to kind of like you know, gotta dig deep, man. You gotta find yeah, the nonsense, yeah, yeah, yeah. then, right? I but, mean, but, like you know, I mean, in, in all this, this is the seriousness, which is the real humor here. Uh-huh. Which is the two of them? I can't remember the guests. They discussed it like it's a. Like how to you know uh, change a diaper on a baby? It's like a serious thing. Let's understand it. You're a first time father. It was exactly like that. So you're in the wild. It's most likely a mother bear who's a girl of the cubs will have that instinct going. And you, there's nothing you can do against 800 pounds of fury. So I thought something good would come out of it. At the end, I'm going to just go down into fetal position and pray to God. I don't, I don't, I don't know whether that's yeah. really secure. It's very cool that that the way to deal with a 800 pound grizzly bear and your high school bully is like the same thing. <laughs> it's the same panda box. But you can places. outrun the high you're, school bully. Maybe with, with, with the grizzly bear, the bad news is apparently goes at forty miles per hour, oh, and I with my dodgy knee and all that. And they were now, all this is against us. Yeah, bag milka my foot. 
<laughs> but but Cyrus, now can you not see the value of that conversation? You know what to do if you see a bear now. We're just thinking, I mean, hundred million dollars he's eaten, all right, and he's discussing with another gentleman. What are they like? A few bear attacks in the whole year. I mean, how many people actually die? You know, and you're talking to mostly city people and mostly out of America. We'll never see a grizzly bear. We'll never. Uh, Anil Kapoor with the early movies, yeah, yeah okay, what a little hairy, <laughs> lovely guy though. But really, where, why, why, yeah. Whatever, hundred million dollars gone yeah. down the tube. So, uh, uh, just a quick, quick side note, uh, quick Joe Rogan's podcast. I don't know if you guys have heard this. Has been seeing a little bit of controversy because uh, some of the like Joe Rogan before going onto Spotify had said that uh, no, it won't affect my podcast. All my episodes will be on Spotify, but a lot of his episodes have not been uploaded to Spotify. Like a lot of the controversial he, ones, like with ones with yeah. Ben Shapiro. Or with Sam Harris, Ooh. some of those episodes. After seeing a uh, free perfect. blanket sheet, do what you want and all. Exactly. They already no, censored so, the episode. So yeah, exactly. Bangshot is That's the Indian word. We don't know. We, he, hasn't, he hasn't put out a word yet about this. So we don't know what exactly is happening. No, so we, we, we actually but, uh, do know what is happening. A lot of his content that he puts out there, a lot of the stuff that he puts out is fine for the YouTube terms of service, but doesn't work on the Spotify terms of service. So when Spotify... What does that mean? Uh, so Spotify has a content... Uh, has a... SAP. Uh, yeah, what's allowed from a content perspective and what's not allowed from a community content perspective. Guidelines. Community guidelines, exactly. And uh, a lot of Joe, I mean, Joe but they promised him a free hand and none of that shit. But, so he has That's a free hand. Idea. He can do whatever he wants to, but that doesn't he promotes mean that marijuana, he promotes there. gun killing, he promotes yeah. sometimes right-wing agenda, sometimes yeah. left. Yeah. Very now, often, yeah. now he's put a Ganesha in his studio, by the way. I heard that. He took yeah. out the Buddha and put the Ganesha. I heard, the Buddha, I, Buddha, yeah, Buddha, Buddha, I, I read about that. I didn't because really... somebody told them there are more Hindus than Buddhists. Want <laughs> 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 to increase the scorecard? <laughs> Just being cynical. Uh, no, but I, uh, but but I mean, like you know, that that that, that was known. To, uh, it was anticipated as a problem from day one, right? So because... just give me an example of which uh, topic is off. off uh, uh, not allowed. I, I think stuff around guns is off limits to a great extent. I think stuff around uh, 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 a lot up. of the uh, no. So a lot of the. Uh, uh, conversations that he has right and I, listen guys I don't want to get into this conversation because I don't know how to kind of navigate it well but the stuff around like you know trans identity versus gender identity Yo, and stuff like yeah, that yeah, that's very controversial it's and a is. minefield right I mean yeah. like you just don't know how to kind of talk about that stuff in real ways he took Ben Shapiro's and, side no? Uh, I don't know if he took Ben Shapiro's side but I mean like no he, he has a point of view Joe Rogan's point of view is that uh, the point of view is his point of view which is that you know this is a free and open yeah. podcast and there will be views that are unacceptable to many people once and that goes for me Joe Rogan has nothing then no, but the whole idea is that he's the he's the barometer for everybody else that but that's the challenge that comes with platforms, right? When platforms attain this degree of power, when you're talking about Twitter, Facebook, uh, Spotify, Instagram, any of these, these platforms have such a degree of power that, and there is no legislation of how, what is allowed and what is not allowed other than what the platform decides. But brother, we've run from feature films to TV, from TV to radio, from radio to podcast so that we are free. Well, Where else can we go now? There's no well, medium left. We are free because we are putting it on the internet right now, right? Yeah. And we're not really free because the government doesn't look at us because we're not that big that's why we're free right yeah. otherwise we have the same fucking PUBG 4G stuff happening here too right well we have an option we can investigate Sushant Singh Rajput's death and our numbers yeah. will go out of the oh my the god did you see well. that I saw an article today on the news minute somebody wrote a long piece uh, pre-pandemic okay uh, average daily viewership on English news channels 17 lakh people post-pandemic 50 lakh people with Sushant Singh Rajput 1.5 crore people it's gone insane it's com completely it's lost all bearings so guys you're not understanding this is what tells you about the common Indian he's not so interested about saving his life or others yeah. but he's interested in knowing why a Bollywood star died no, and, and that, that, that's point, good that's a good point they're also aware that it's all some kind of storytelling that's happening your yeah. uh, soap opera has moved from your G from GC to news channel like my mom is obsessed with yeah. all our moms what's with our moms all, all, all of her moms I don't all think she's moms. ever seen a movie with him in it <laughs> oh, when he was alive right yeah. and, and, but she's completely obsessed no no not only that the moms all seem to get this uh this blood rush that the world is against this group of actors, the smaller actors or the you outsiders know, or whatever. They, it's it's the all sold. Netflix murder mystery equivalent for news. It my, is. My wife loves murder mysteries on Netflix and she'll watch Making a Murder a hundred billion times and that's my my mom's now watching this. I think there's something in there. <laughs> no, but it, the revenge is, of my mom actually calls it that, right? My mom calls it, I, I, this, I'm watching my serial now. 
she yeah. actually calls it that because she is somewhat <laughs> self-aware, right? I mean, like of the fact that how yeah. nonsensical it is. Yeah. Yeah. But she's she, but she's she's totally self-aware. You're right, Amit. Yeah. You're totally self-aware. My mom's like totally aware. I know yeah. it's nonsense. I know it's Arnabs. I know whoever else it is. But I love it. I want to. Yeah, there's it. no disclaimer saying it's a work of fiction. They should keep that on top <laughs> before they call eighteen bodies to investigate and make it into a murder, which it but isn't. And imagine oh the God. writers range, right? Yeah. You start with start with depression and suicide, then go to international uh, drug tax mafia. laundering, then now drug mafia. It's it's beautiful. What it's, narcos couldn't do it better. <laughs> it is. You're right. It's a yeah. whole season. It's That's going really, on. We all thought it would die in a week or something. It's two months. He's kicked out it. Three. It's not one season. If this, if all of this happened in one season, we would not accept it. Of any fictional show, if there was this much character flow in in one season, <laughs> for the last three days, the channels are carrying the tag "Ria about to be arrested." It's now like it's like India winning the World Cup again, feeling about to be arrested. You know, <laughs> these last two overs. Oh man, it's just oh, so man, that I mean, did you, did you see that angry she's uncle? Guilty or not guilty? That, that girl is just. Well, I'm on her side in a sense because I think it's just ridiculous. Whatever yeah, she's yeah. guilty of, Absolutely. I mean, this is just Absolutely. ridiculous. Yeah. You know, if she's guilty of dhokaoing him or whatever, I mean, who hasn't gone through that? This is not a. I mean, this is life, yeah. yeah you yeah. can't give a um, execution caller a murder and also be too too far fetched. Yeah. Really? And it's one man, one man who's pushing an agenda, and the others have followed, unfortunately. Because his channel. F- Freaking triple viewership. I mean, like, you know, the thing is that, uh, see, here's the thing as well to understand, right? I mean, like, uh, so this was a very informative article. Antriksh, you know, I'll send you the link of it. Put in the put in the description so people can read it. Uh, it's, okay, it's from the News Minute, right? And they were talking about, like, you know, where the pushbacks were coming for, from this kind of coverage, right? And, like, anchors who don't want to cover this are given less time on air. You know, if oh. you don't ask tough questions about it, you're given, uh, you're penalized around this stuff. You know, I mean, like, uh, one guy got bajowed by his editor because he did not make up the fact that Rhea was watching some channel which some other editor made up that you know they went around her house and like took photographs from outside and said that she's watching this channel and they're like why are you not getting a scoops like this I mean like you know the thing is that incentives are extraordinarily perverse around this right it's a bad time in the advertising world. I mean, like for media and stuff like that, because budgets are not as much as they used to. IPL aside, there uh, are no more movies in theaters. There are no more no movies, movies in theater. no Indian cricket going on yet. And uh, you know, you're right. Sorry, go on. No, so it's a perfect storm, right? It's essentially all of these things to put together, plus the jealousy around Bollywood and the Bollywood lifestyle. Uh, plus, uh, you know, there's so much bad faith around quote unquote drugs over here, oh, yeah. where they're talking about yeah. drug mafia, drug mafia, drug mafia. I mean, like, honestly, we're talking about weed and we're talking about, like, you know, a couple of bags of weed. Yeah. We're not talking about, like, uh, uh, cocaine and heroin. And, like, I had drugs. that conversation with my mom yesterday. Yeah. So she was like, drugs. And I was like, drugs? Yeah. I was like, it's weed. What yeah. drugs? And and the question is, the question was that how did she get these dealers' numbers on her phone? I was like, dude, he he she wanted to score once in her life, (laughs) and that's how she got the number on her phone. I I, all that. Let's not buy into all that. I'm just saying, it could be any, it could be once, it could be a hundred times, but that's how you get the number of the dealer. That's that's not not rocket science. It it really is. It's like this perfect storm of toxicity, drugs. There's also a sociological dynamic. A sociological dynamic here which people are missing which is the middle class has the most anger inside them all right because yeah. let's face it the whole world is about the middle class the poor they have nothing it doesn't make any difference to them they've already given up so they, they don't care nothing to lose for and the rich have a different world that they live in so again they're happy for most of the time middle class anger so much they need something to vent and this covid was made us more even more angry i think the moment he hit the button on this thing about this rich nexus and mafia and outsiders being pushed around and this poor guy not being uh, defended if it was you know sharukh or salman uh, everybody would have come to, to investigate but he you know lesser light or whatever so he pushed that agenda superbly and the middle classes decided fine this is the revolution this is the bloody revolution in our country hey, but and that is why i am now resigning from the middle class as of today i'm just giving in my signature right here and I'm gone. I will go to, since I can't afford upper class, I'm going straight to lower class. I'm quite happy there. Yeah. Which yeah. is also the standard of our show, so one shouldn't talk too much. Yeah. But it's uh, really sad that our mothers are discussing drugs with us were... after so many years. Yeah. Yeah. Silvery, <laughs> this is your great time to increase your allowance. Mom, let me show you her, her kism ka drug. <laughs> chalti hai drug. Let me show you tarika kya hai. We have many different objects, Mom. You can cut your finger on this yeah. one. I think I think this is a great time to have that hard work conversation with the parents. So, Silvery, do you use drug? Awkward pause. Uh, CBI inquiry. Uh, call us up on one eight hundred two seven seven. 
Now it was uh, Joe Rogan. We could talk openly. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we would not no be pla- we would yeah. be platform, so it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Would it? And also, it would be a huge thing that we were on Joe Rogan firstly, so. That would be very exciting. Wow. Which now sounds like we must have been on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did we get there? I'm not a grizzly bear. Or <laughs> we killed a bear. <laughs> or a transgender <laughs> yet. Oh. <laughs> to make it. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Too much, too much. Okay, you want to talk All about right, Djokovic? Let's... Yeah, Djokovic, I, I want to talk about, uh, just quickly set it up for those who really, there'll be someone who doesn't know hate sport, like my friend Kunal. Uh, so basically, yeah. I'm a big fan of Djokovic. I thought what he did for the Balkan referees, unfortunately, he's gotten bad press, but his heart was in the right place. There's no money in tournaments for them. They, you know, he was trying to raise money. It's a charitable gesture. And then, of course, COVID and all that shit. So people went after him. But he's, but he's he a very really nice guy. Stu- he, he did some stupid shit in COVID. No, he was the no, anti-mask he- guy, right? No. Yeah, he was the anti-mask guy. He's the not the anti-mask, anti-mask guy. guy, but he talked about, uh, hey, we should stay open to the possibility that yeah. masks may not be as good as they're supposed to yeah. be. Well, so well see, like, I, I'm, I'm on his side because I'm sick of the mask people and all that. So that's another story. But I just, look, uh, I'm saying that he's a really good human being as far as I can tell. The intent is always good. Now, right. all this shit will happen is fine. It's not like he's like an evil genius. But what happened there, he got frustrated. He had a few moments of, uh, the lost three set points or other uh, set points on his serve. And then he lost the set to the, the Spanish guy and then he lost it and he hit the ball aggressively back it was inadvertently done and it hit the lady on the throat I thought she overacted she looked like an Indian Idol participant or something you know telling the back story <laughs> oh mere paas paisa nahi hai kuch nahi hai mummy daddy kuch nahi you know all that sad stuff and the veena playing in the background but she got up she didn't go to the hospital in the end as he observed and he was apologetic he was sorry why can't they just say fine him give him uh, you offload the set if they wanted you know I, I just thought it was too much to I, I didn't think the penalty fit the crime honestly yeah it's, it's a obviously disqualifying him right exactly yeah, and the I, thing is, of the big three, he's the only one who turned up for this tournament. He gave the US uh, open some profile. He said, I'll come. I'm the one who went without masks and had 40 people in COVID in 15 minutes in the exhibition matches three months ago. So I'll come. And I, he's been good for tennis, in a sense, uh, for those who want to be positive. I thought it's just, he, he's not like, like McEnroe who was misbehaving when they threw him out, you know, really misbehaving, really abusing, or this Kyr- Kyrgios who's made a you know, statement, fashion statement of being the bad boy of tennis. So I, I thought it was it was harsh. So it was, I, I have a question, happy. right? So I mean, like I saw the video, I saw how it played out, right? Uh, is this something that general? What happens if a player, if a tennis player has an extra ball and he wants to get rid of it in some way? What does he normally do? No, but if he didn't hit it in anger, then it would be considered yeah, an accident, he, right? You just drop it and toss it back, right? The the ball by the back just gets yeah, it. Just right. no, so it. Do they ever do they ever flick it like this? That's my they, question. They right? flick it, but not they, because, because of anger. But not with that force. Because no, because I saw that the second he did it and saw it going to that woman, right? Even before I think it reached, he was like, wait, wait, you know, he was like trying to stop and pull the ball back. Right, so mm. it looked like it was unintentional in that sense. But the question is, in no, my it was mind, unintentional in the sense he yeah. snapped. It. Oh yeah, he, he wasn't. No, no, but he wasn't looking to hit the woman either. Right, he was just hitting the ball. No, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but yeah. my question is, are you allowed to kind of dismiss a ball like that if you have an extra ball in your hand? That that's the question, right? Because that seems to me like it's asking for a degree of you no. Know, if they have a strict rule of that nature in basketball, for example. You know, again, that's the sport I know. But it's, uh, there, there is a very strict rule that anybody who's inactive steps onto the court, you're out of the game. That's it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. No, but this is, a gray the area. Reason... this is a grey area where he has two balls, sorry to use the pun, uh-huh. or four. Uh, the grey area, the... because this could have happened as an accident if he had flicked it, as you said. Right. He did it deliberately and with force. But he didn't do it to hurt someone. He just lost it for a second, forgot there are people standing behind. Didn't ex... Look, he... there was no intent for him to hit that lead, that's for sure. Right. But as a career great and all that, he should vaguely know that the ball boys and the linesmen and all are behind you somewhere and that you could hit somebody. You're Djokovic, even you, you hit something with anger, you're one of the best players in the world. Uh, but I still think you shouldn't be thrown out of the tournament. The, the, the COVID has killed everybody. The, the tournament needs the greats. So I was very upset. They, they could have given him a nice... Uh, give, the, give the set to the Spaniard guy whose name I can't pronounce. How Sorry about that. I will learn that and say it again at the end of the show. And, and, and move on from there. That would have been good enough. Or, or a hefty fine. I know he's a multi-millionaire, so hefty fine ka matlab kya hai. But, you know, whatever. I just think it, it, the intent was not there. When the intent is not there, oh, I don't know what's going on, man. Just, uh, God, it's like building society guys are not running tennis. Oh, kya kya? You're playing backhand without mask. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. It goes back to what we expect of our sportsmen these days, right? It's not just we want them to be great sports people. We want them to be role models, right? And and, and I think it goes back to that a little bit, no? 
It's uh, because she choked and held the ball on her neck and then went down in fetal position like grizzly bears attacking. I mean, Chor Open would have laughed I, it off. I, 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 won't, I won't blame the victim in that way. I think the US Open, the authorities would have done better. Um, definitely knowing, like you said, uh, Saras, COVID season, nobody else has turned up. You could have given him a light rap. Um, made him say sorry publicly or whatever. He's already. But he said sorry. He would have he said did, sorry did, publicly. Yeah, yeah. He's still apologetic about it. Apologetic. He's not a bad guy. Yeah. 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 It all happened in on the court only, right? I mean, like he was thrown out. Of, uh, basically, he, within he was ten minutes, on the eleventh minute of deliberation, they brought in the referee and this and that, and four five of them stood there, and you could see him arguing and begging with his hands and explaining his point. But, but, and, I mean, it's a single elimination tournament. Tournament, right? If they forfeit the match, he's gone. He's gone. Right, and and that's for the for since March, that's the only really big tennis moment. He won the warm up uh, tournament before this in the US, but he's Djokovic. It's all about the Grand Slams. Yeah, yeah, right. So now you you're Nadal uh, chickened out. Uh, our friend Federer has got his uh, knee surgery issues, etc. So out of the big three, only he turns up, you know. And they are the big three with due respect to Dominic Thiem and all these people whose names Amit you will not remember, but they uh, they're, they're I, still there. I but they've not made Djokovic. it in terms of profile for the sport. They still have to you know push the sport further. I wish I had continued playing. I could have won the US Open this year on one leg with a mask <laughs> and gloves, you know, maybe with the hazmat suit. We're, we're cheering for you, man. Thanks, bro. Thanks. And when I backhand the ball, my weak arms and weak legs, I don't think it would hit anyone. They'd still be reaching the lady right now, two days later. Yeah. But yesterday, I hit a biker with my car. I was so happy. He came very quickly on the one way that opens, enters Malba Hill, the main thing. Oh, how to explain it? From Malba Hill into Little Kibbs Road. He came really fast in the middle. So I just held my car and tapped him. And he fell a little bit and then on one leg and then turned around and gave me the look. And all. I just kept driving. There was a little scratch, of course, on my car. And then he got I... disqualified. <laughs> No, so, uh, they are deliberating now because my intent was only to kill him, you know, <laughs> not to molest or hurt him in a sexual way, but just to kill him. Yeah. I, I, what I really love for me, just the humor, it's best is when one way, guys break the one way and look at you like you're wrong. You know, I love that because that's why oh, India yeah. and law oh, yeah. just don't get along. You want people to wear masks and stand in line and hold 10 feet distance. I say balls to you and your family. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. We have no sense of law. We just don't. At the moment we think we can get away, we're going to get away. Right or no? I, yeah. We all drive looking at the video camera. With the video cameras, we slow down a bit. And all the, that's how it works. Nobody yeah. really cares. The city that does it best, the wrong side driving with the proper stair is Amdavad. They have like... No concept of right Super side, wrong side. They will just drive at you. They're like, bro, care. what is your problem? I don't even have alcohol. I have to get yeah. high on masala chas. Let me drive the way I want it, bro. <laughs> like, that's the scene there. Like, wrong side, look you in the eye and they'll be like, Do go your own way, man. It's, it's amazing. Amdabad and old so, Amdabad. So BJP actually, will uh, claim this as a victory, saying they can absolutely. go both sides. See, this is the only party that can manage. Well, Congress will have to answer for not having roads. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. So, I think that's the secret of BJP's success. <laughs> that they can go both sides in the <laughs> And segue. Aage kya hai, beta? Silvery. Okay. Uh, okay, let's move on to the pro- official topics that we have planned. Uh, I don't know if you guys... Okay, you can, can, I, can I bring up yeah. one before we actually get into yes, this? Yes. Yeah. Uh, did you see about the cause of the California forest fire? Yeah, oh. I did. Uh, so it, there's a uh, massive California yeah. forest fire going on right now, right? So some okay, four, yeah. uh, some like 7,000 acres burnt or something like that. The reason is apparently this has become a thing and this has happened five times at least till now. Gender announcement explosions. What? So people have gender announcement parties. Okay, when so like you're having, no, no, when you're having gender a kid, reveal, yeah. Huh? Uh, yeah. Gender reveal, yeah. For the kid, gender for the kid. Reveal, for the kid. Reveal, you're yeah. having a kid. You not, know, not a coming out party. Oh, yeah. fuck. Not coming out. Yeah. What a boring story. Just <laughs> to tell the people you got male or female. Who gives a flying fuck? <laughs> <But> do they think I just see the bastard walking around your road? No. Not a fucking ugly kid. Yeah. Come on. Cyrus, it's caused five major fires. Right, so Those forest parties. fires and shit over gender reveal parties, right? So I mean, like basically, what, what happens? You have this party, you call a bunch of people, you blow up something which is either blue or pink, okay, yeah. depending on, and that lets people know that you are having a boy or a girl, right? And then that has caused fires. This one in California is going on right now. Apparently, they're going to find this guy millions of dollars for doing. Uh, for, for but like Djokovic's uh, intent was not to do, uh, blow up the whole of California. Yeah, but you're not allowed to blow shit up and then cause a fire, no? You have to if you're gonna call, if but you're gonna intend to, yeah, nobody so intended to. But then you have to take appropriate. Uh, you have to take appropriate. So it's negligent more than uh, negligent. It is, it crime is. is a little different from intent. Intentional. Well, crime. but I mean, like, uh, but uh, intent can be also seen if your negligence is too high, no? 
Yeah, at some well, level, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, like negligence crosses over into intent. I mean, like, you know, you can't push everything onto negligence. Like Rocky Savan's intent is to be a philosopher and then comes out as a comedian. Uh, while mine is the reverse. <laughs> I intend to be a comedian and come out as a philosopher. So you see, these things have to be judged. But perhaps 20 years later, we'll be judged correctly. This generation is all but, shit. But, all gone to. But again, yes, sir, that, sorry, you were saying. Are they sure you, of this? Or is that, is that, are they sure yeah, yeah, of this? No, or is, is there, that just a theory? So this is what happened. There's actually video of it, right? There's video of the fire starting. Oh, wow. Because Big uh, Brother, oh, wow. just like in India, they're checking to see male child hai, hai ki nahi. From, from Washington headquarters. <laughs> is it a man to send to war? Is it a male? Uh, but uh, how no, sad but, that, so, that poor kid will have that thing if it's proven yeah. on their head that because of my birth... <laughs> But I'm yeah. so sorry, insensitive. <laughs> but millions of trees and forests was destroyed because of my birth, in a sense. But Oops, it's crazy, dude. This has happened five times and they're using like high explosive for this product, right? I mean, like, they're why? using why? Like, yeah. Are they, they from Haryana? Like, idiots. Yeah. In Haryana, some weddings are celebrated and parts of UP and definitely mm-hmm. in uh, Rawalpindi when I was there for two days. These things do happen. But that's a subcultural thing. It shouldn't happen Is in Is that California. where the t-shirt's from? Oh, oops, ouch. Ah, what say you? Start fight? You, they start fire, we start riot. That's the difference in India and America. <laughs> oops. So just uh, just for the record, I mean, this is such a bad question to ask. Was it a boy or a girl? Uh, don't know. Never. Uh, so actually, that was one of the things that I saw in like the news coverage that nobody mentioned. Is it a boy or a girl? What the? Oh, wow. uh, this Can I do one really bad one? Uh-huh. Did they play at the time of the revealing? Did they play that famous Billy Joel song? We didn't did start, start the fire. fire. <laughs> 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 okay, that's it. We cannot be so unempathetic. I don't know why this is happening. I blame it on lockdown. My sensitivity is just gone. But the, I only think about myself. Shaggy huh? lyric that you can bring it up. But but you got me on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but have they really? That's the question. What is the DC family boss? Yeah, DC is in California. Huh. It turns out to be the Guptas. I mean, what the hell? Three children, three countries destroyed. So they, they had a fire two years ago in Arizona, which burnt down close to 50,000 acres. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, you know, there's been... Uh, one from one Florida, party. From one bomb. Because, dude, the, these are... Uh, the, so that's the thing, right? If you live in these areas, which are forest fire or... Uh, or kind of like, forest, right? Yeah, where, 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 you know, there are possibilities of that. Then you have additional kind of restrictions around setting open flames. So and why do you kind of send a tweet to Donald Trump and tell him, instead of uh, mass uh, weapons of mass destruction, etc., take one of these guys who has a successful party career with the uh, revelations of gender and put them in Syria and the hotspots where you want to, you know, cause trouble. It'll be cheaper, cost effective. It'll involve only the revelation of somebody, some kid's gender nobody cares about. And uh, you'll destroy half that country. Okay, awkward pause for actually listening me out and <laughs> taking it down and saying, what do we do with Mad- Madman the Nutcase? And then he wants to call out Donald Trump. Does Trump even know this happened? I'm sure he does. This is... Uh, Was it this, on this, uh, <laughs> this is his Sushant Singh Rajput. He doesn't want The distraction from what's happening in COVID you know that, right? and race. Oh, yeah, he's moved what? to that other thing. The he's on way and now. He, does, he hates Fox News now because especially, you know, the uh, uh, Fox News reporter confirmed the story of him uh, disrespecting all uh, the uh, soldiers uh, uh, the soldiers and stuff oh. like that. Right? So, so that's the, I've been saying this on the He's not right wing. He's just Donald Trump. He's just Donald he's Trump. He's an absolutely yeah. arrogant rich man. Arrogant rich men are different from other people. Mm-hmm. Right wing yeah. is you know you got your agenda and place. You'll never make a mistake because of forty years you've been you know going to church and carrying guns and doing all these things that right wing America does. This guy is just a, he's a maverick. He's not. That's that why he's more dangerous. I was actually. watching uh, on the Joe Rogan podcast. I was watching a YouTube clip a couple of days ago. Uh, Penn and Teller. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the app. Uh, so, so that guy was on. Penn was on, right? And he was telling. So he did two seasons of Celebrity Apprentice. Correct. I, yeah, I know this. Yeah, and so he was talking about like you know his uh, inside stories. Inside stories about Donald Trump, right? And apparently, a couple of things was Donald Trump never genuinely laughed. He never told yeah, a joke. You told us this, yeah. And yeah, well. he uh, never listened to music. Okay, I'm right. going to make an important yeah. revelation here. My good friend Kunal is a bit like this. I've told him many times it upsets him, but he doesn't laugh with any mirth. You know, so I've always noticed when we're in a group of people, it's like a fake thing that happens. You all know people like that. Uh, what is it? Is that they lack empathy or they're socially uncomfortable? There's something. I, I think some people don't laugh out loud and because you don't laugh out loud, you make the, f- you, you make the kind of... No, uh, no, that's extrovert, introvert. I'm not talking uh, about that. I'm talking about the fact that they just do not enjoy group uh, dynamic of, you know, fun. 
you know, we all bad. dumb yeah, down yeah. and become a little infantile. And yeah, then there's totally this one guy who doesn't join the bandwagon. Yeah, I think it totally happens. I had this one friend um, who obviously wouldn't be very like loud and boisterous when three or four people are around. But he had a rule. If there was a fifth person in the room, he would leave the room. He would literally what? just leave the room. Yeah. And as the fifth person would come in, spend a minute or so talking to us, if this guy realized that the fifth person is here to hang, he would leave because he had a rule that said, I will only hang out with a maximum of three other people. And, and people have these like sort of weird rules. And he had this thing as well. His laugh was always slightly, you know, you know, that half second delay that, oh, yeah, I was supposed to, yeah that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. Like if you go back and watch the roast of Donald Trump now, which is, oh, yeah. is still a great watch. He, he never doesn't smiled, laugh really. once. He just like has this dumb smile on his face throughout. Uh, I remember Jeff Ross has to start his set going, Trump, are you having a good time? He goes, yeah. Like, well, tell your face. <laughs> it's just such a... I love, love that. Love that. Love, love that. Yeah. Oh, man. But, uh, man. Yeah, but, but coming back nice. to Amit, so, so in the interview, he said that this, this is a guy who doesn't have human reactions. He just, yeah, he's just basically a weird person, right? He's a strange person. And, and, and off camera, been... unfriendly, right? Uh, off camera, no, off camera, not unfriendly, right? So, I mean, like, again, his thing, uh, so what, what he was saying was that um, Donald Trump has no filter uh, in terms of how he talks and how he thinks. And that's why Penn found him interesting. He thought he was an interesting person to listen to. So he actually said like a six-year-old person who's now old, you know, in a human, in a (laughs) body. He's basically, he's pure ego and pure id, right? He's no super ego, right? So, I mean, like that, 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 that's kind of the, uh, this. So uh, one of the interesting things also he was saying was that Donald Trump Jr. told Penn that you seem to like my father more than almost anybody else who's been on the show. Which I thought was interesting too, right? But, but tongue in cheek, we'll never know. Yeah. Uh, well, who knows? Who knows, right? But it, it is. Uh, it is definitely... His son was like, including but, me. I'm yeah, in that but, list too. But one thing he is, he's an absolute alpha male. So what happens with that is he doesn't want friends. He doesn't. You see, he yeah. doesn't need yeah. friends. He just needs people around him to agree with him, yeah. which he can buy and sell and trade like a you're in the market. It makes no difference. So I but think, that, and you, we all know people like that also. But they that, just that, don't have strong human bonding. They just, you know. But that, yeah, that, that's what came through in his conversation uh, or his comments that uh, leaked last week around this as well, right? Around the military stuff. It was simply just that, right? That he could not understand why people would join the military if they had other options. There's, right? I mean, like the most telling, right? You know, I mean, like you, you, uh, you, you don't think well of that like... That could have been know, a left comment actually in a sense exactly. also without necessarily being anti-military. It's just about yeah. an, anti-war. It's not anti-military yeah. actually. No, but his was anti-military, right? Yeah, in some sense, because uh, one of the things that he... Uh, see, anti-war is one thing, right? And that you might not uh, uh, I think everybody appreciate. should be anti-war. I mean, I can't Correct. see the sense of that. But anti-military in the sense, like, you know, the, one of the comments which I found most telling about him from a personality standpoint, right? There was a senior general who gave a presentation and he spoke to one of his people next to him saying that, man, that guy seems smart. Why is he in the military? Right? It, it, it's, it's just... Like, it's uh, just my mom. Yeah. That's my mom's understanding. Of yeah. Yeah, it's it's just basically this idea that I mean, like you know, if you have options, why would you do that? Yeah, but he said worse to Michael Cohen, or according to Michael Cohen in his uh, book, The Lawyer, uh, the things he said about you know that uh, wherever there's been a black president, that country's a shithole, quote unquote. Okay, I mean that's uh, firstly just look back at America because their best part was with the black president and now it's a shithole that's the irony but um, I mean there's nothing about free speech what we say in private let's say me and Vinita are hanging out okay and we decide to go after I don't know somebody you know maybe one political party or whatever and if you record that I don't think that's completely fair it's not you know, because sometimes we just openly talk but and neither think, of us are in public office no sirs that's true that's true but when he said it these are all off sort of uh, uh, recorded statements are not necessarily uh, put on record. Right. So in a sense, sometimes I'm thinking, you know, I must have made many racist comments. You must have made communal comments, casteist comments. Uh, yeah, you can't, everybody's made these things. There's nobody out there who has it. I cannot believe. Right. Okay, but, but you definitely won't uh, advocate that. Uh, if, if you were asked, the push comes to shove, you're not going to do that you know, on a platform so, and advocate any of that. But, 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 but jokingly, but we'll say it. So here's the question, what's public and what's private, right? In this sense, when it comes to a public figure like Donald Trump, private is him with his family, his friends, etc. It's Tommy Daniels. Huh? <laughs> Stormy. Stormy Daniels is as private as yeah. the cheap, one of the richest men in the in, around, and he refused to pay the full rate. He must be Indian. There must be. <laughs> no, but, but so 
private is uh, private makes sense in that context right but when you are uh, when you are doing the duties of the office that you have been elected to you're no longer private at that point in time right every utterance that the president makes in public and, and by public i mean even like uh, discussions and stuff like that go into presidential archives all of his phone calls go into presidential archives all of his meeting agendas True. go into presidential and in, archives. And, and he's not stupid he knows in the 21st century now yeah, everything course. you say even if we are standing in the corner somebody will be recording you have no idea you know so, uh, uh, if i talk about uh, even uh, even you cyrus right i mean like if you and me are talking on the phone that's private right but if you and i are talking with five other people in a meeting of some nature that's not private right that 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 is a conversation Absolutely. that is is uh, being done in a forum of some yeah, nature but it's, it's you know not... it's, it's like bar talk man you drink a little and someone sometimes people lead a prejudice okay let, let me just put it that way so someone just starts leading a prejudice and other people don't counter it they just don't care about it enough they're just talking like gossip what i mean is that they sit and think about it many very often you find a lot of people not making those unbalanced uh, points uh, because human beings are bastards uh, now why can't we just accept the fact we're all chutes uh, thomas hobbes was right selfish egoistic and cruel so that's that's there so there's a certain indulgence that that can be offered to someone in in good humor right okay we were in a bar and and uh, everyone had a couple and he made a racist joke right and that's we what sat I'm him down exactly to, that tomorrow we sat him down and told him that that was racist and we didn't pick a fight and didn't record it and ruin his career but when it's the president of the united states who's got elected on a right wing platform talking about the military and how america first and all of that and then he's talking making disparaging remarks about about the military and this is a guy um, you should remember that he Dodged the draft twice with with bone spurs. Superbly, right? right? With bone spurs, right? I mean, that's genuine genius, right? Saying who I could be a spurs. more ultimate patriot than one who doesn't go to war? I mean, that's the guy. Right? Absolutely, that's the guy and, to salute. And, and then yeah. you have this guy now talking about, oh, I can't believe he joined the military. He seems like he's a smart guy. That's just so many levels. There's hypocrisy and stupidity. Um, and 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 I think what's the best thing about it is that he knows he's immune to this, right? At least till November this year, he's immune. You remember the time he said uh, at one of his campaign rallies when he said, "If I stand on Fifth Avenue and shoot a guy, I would still not lose votes." Right? This is the guy who. Yeah. But did he mention that. which color? <laughs> no, because he <laughs> well, basically kind of, kind of know which he color. ripped that off from uh, ripped that off from the West Wing, right? Right, pretty much. Yeah, that that was a line from the West. So now we have a president whose base is life philosophy on a TV show, and that's it. I'll rule the whole world. Yeah, dude, this one I wish show. he based his life philosophy on Martin Sheen's character from the West Wing. If he did, that life would have been great. Oh, if a man could switch for Martin Sheen, yeah, do it, but he can never do that jacket thing. I don't think his hands go that high. <laughs> and too small. <laughs> God, look at us here, Indians in India discussing what's wrong with. Well, we, hey, America. listen. If American media is going to dominate the world. In the way that it yeah, does yeah. and the coverage that it does, then we are going to talk about stuff that. No, no, you're singing to the alone. choir. I believe it's a globalized world anyway, yeah. so everything affects yeah. everybody. I'm, I, I think it's like the whole Chinese ban and all that. I mean, we have to think, think it through that you have to yeah. set aside and all that because it's just the logistics and the it's mind-boggling. If you actually stop every it, single product, every single ingredient yeah. in every single product, if you actually stop every single trade agreement, every single small business, every single person who's no, gone there from either country, no. it's but it's never, it's not possible. But Cyrus, they haven't. They've gone after the segment. That's that what's tokenism. Been, no, it's not tokenism. It's actually, it's actually yeah. the. It shows to a great degree. The lack of understanding that our politicians and our political our, our polity have towards what's in the economy today, okay, or what the economy consists of today, right? They say GDP, what which economy? is economy. The economy, the GDP is what the economy. Best. No, but they've so G- frozen us for six months. There's nothing left. You but and I are wearing what, the same shirt for three weeks now. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and no right? pants because GDP. Have to share with my dad. Huh. What we've seen is we've seen this drop in GDP, right? We've seen this big drop in GDP. Now GDP is gross domestic product. is calculated in a certain way. It's calculated with a certain buckets. It's calculated with certain statistics. Now they look at that and they only see that. And the fact of the matter is that the digital economy is extraordinarily important in today's world. And given the importance, see, they, they're not going out and saying, "Oh, let's stop imports of Chinese goods. Let's and, stop this particular." Let's stop manufacturing of uh, OnePlus, which is a brand which is owned in China. They're not saying let's stop One that. Plus. Let's not saying let's stop. Uh, no let's, OnePlus. Yeah, the OnePlus, Xiaomi. They're not saying. Are they going to make it One that. minus? No, stop it. <laughs> look at us. Look at uh, us, Chinese lovers. Uh, oh my uh, God. Uh, <laughs> Amit, uh, you're off the show. Uh, Amit, I'm going to Xiaomi. No, Xiaomi. Xiaomi. Uh, uh, Xiaomi. Uh, no, but I mean like. Uh, 
they, they're not stopping that. They're not stopping pharmaceutical imports of Chinese goods. They're not stopping any of this stuff. They're stopping the stuff which is easy and makes a good headline, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, exactly. And it is... But the importance of PUBG in today's world cannot be denied. Right? And to yeah. remove that from the adolescent's hand, in some cases, elderly adolescent, but, you know, that's and wrong. Especially when they're stuck at home. Uh, and don't forget, yeah, he mentioned, uh, Namo mentioned it, remember, a few months back, oh. uh, when a mother complained about one kid, uh, or something like that. And he, yeah, yeah, exactly. Said, oh, PUBG is yeah, PUBG is like, yeah. ah, exactly. And then he says, uh, frontline wala, nahi to, front, frontline wala hoga. He wanted to say Fortnite. Fortnite, <laughs> yeah. Front oh, line. <laughs> is that so? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Donald Trump moment. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> frontline is the best this side, by the way. If I'm Dolan not mistaken. Trump. Huh? Yeah. Dolan Trump. Also, Dolan, Dolan, Dolan. That's a Rupa frontline. That I liked. Underwear. That I liked. Yeah, that's that's I liked. Trump <laughs> All the briefings in the world, who cares? Who said I'm Trump? Rishikesh is also good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was actually one of the topics, the PUBG ban, yeah. you know, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, when I wrote it up on it. No, 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 it is. It's, it's annoying, right? It makes no sense. Yeah. That's the thing. It, it makes, makes no, no sense. sense. It, uh, Especially it, since you have quarantined everyone at home for six months, and now they had one one outlet <laughs> to also, talk to other people in Gurgaon. To communicate with people. Exactly, and as really in Gurgaon, when they broke the television sets, many of them with Chinese manufacturing names, etc. A lot of them are assembled here. So, you know, you're killing the vendors and the business that is actually uh, Indian business, more or less. And those yeah. guys will suffer. I, yeah. Like like Amit said, the, the thing is not thought through. It's like Salman Rushdie's satanic verses. You don't have to read it. You just have to burn it. I mean, it's pointless. You know, if you don't have your, a proper route of investigation as the great Republic TV has, uh, you know, shown us. No, so, uh, and, and, the, and, and, and the excuse used, right, is so specious in some ways, right? It's like we are trying to protect the, uh, the, the data of Indian consumers. Then write the rules so that you are saying what the data policy is. Don't uh, just don't, – don't pick up Chinese apps. Basically, you're trying to do a trade war without doing a trade war by just trying to uh, uh, try and uh, – Pick and choose. It. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not sensible. It's called selective racism, uh, you know. Or we do it in the, in the dog world. People only like their own dogs. You know, they're very strange. There are strange people. They only like their own dog. They actually don't like dogs. You know, it's like you only like your own baby, which I accept because I can't stand kids. You know, so when everybody else goes, oh, look at him, darling. He's so sweet. But hey, she looks like you. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. He's another round ball, big gigantic head on small shoulders. And I, I, I you know, people like my wife, you know, oh, should we have another one? I'm like, are you crazy? Just about now they look okay to look at. You know, from 17 and 13. Takes you long for them to look like people. Babies are creepy people. I, no disrespect, but if you just see 10 babies in the night, don't you get scared? Firstly, they're so small and they make sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Only 10 babies in the night. Only 10, like all, all, all at once? once? Yeah. <laughs> just supposing you went to a place, maybe, you know, where they had lots of babies for some reason. Like I'm a hospital? Sorry. Well, I hope not. <laughs> not during COVID. <laughs> what kind of idiot impregnates his wife? Hey, let's do it during COVID. It's cheaper. Yeah, beds available. Test me karega muft mein. Chalo, count to ten. Main karta abhi. Tak, tak. Ding, 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 ding. Ho gaya. IPL chalo. Let's get on with it. Bring up the child. Come back in 20 years. <laughs> oh, boy. Silvery, you're the only one here who has to look forward to the future. I'm already 49. I think Amit is somewhere two, three years behind that. And I don't know at this moment Vinny's age, but it's definitely more than yours. I'm 32. 32. <laughs> 32. So, <laughs> sir, at 27, 28, you still have hope. What are you going to do? Canada? Uh, hopefully, man. Who knows? Indonesia, maybe. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, that means then you're screwed for the rest of your life with the same girl. I mean... Think about that also uh, before you commit. Yes. Na. Yeah, it's I not a mutual fund, right. really. They tell I you it's a mutual fund. Nothing comes later. The best years are the first years. It's just, it's, it's the opposite of wine. Remember that. They all give wrong information here, Vinny. Tell him something, now, Baba. They put it on the label, yeah. It has to be put on the label. Yeah, read the label. Read the fucking label. He's <laughs> embarrassed. We'll find his okay. body in Indonesia. We'll <laughs> <laughs> call Chawanga. up Republic TV. Was it murder? Was it suicide? Is current you are involved? Tell us now. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. I hope none of that happens. Okay. I want to thank Intel for supporting our show. Do you remember when last year we spoke about how the Intel vPro platform is built for business? Well, I'm glad to say we've kicked things up a notch. That's right, Intel is back with a new and improved version of the platform. Optimized with 10th generation Intel core processors, the platform is just what IT and business users need. 
especially in times like now when most of us are working from home. The new Intel vPro platform lets you do more of what you want and less of what you don't. So it's better for you and for your IT teams who really are the backbone of keeping your work from home experience easy and enjoyable. The platform is built to minimize your efforts and maximize your PC productivity, especially when working from home. I can safely say that the new vPro platform gives you more enterprise efficiency with less constraints. Visit intel.in slash more with vPro, that's vPRO, to discover how you can get more done with less waiting. If you're listening on the IVM podcast Android app, take a look at the screen right now and you'll see a link which will take you directly there. Just a quick uh, related to the Sushant Singh Rajput case, uh, Kangana Ranaut's offices got uh, raided by government officials yesterday uh, because she uh, was talking, she said something against uh, the Shiv Sena government ruling party. That Sanjay and, Raut, uh, who is uh, one of the great humanitarians of the Shiv Sena <laughs> government, <laughs> went on record to say she should be thrown out of Maharashtra and can't stay here. Because yeah. we are not a democracy and you can't criticize governments or those kind of things. That's very wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the greatest fan of Kangana the world has ever seen but I mean like really are these yeah. the villains of our country really are these the ones we have to persecute the Rhea Chakrabortis or the Kanganas I know on different sides at the moment but honestly I mean do, do people not see that these are not the real issues of India we just discussed 24% GDP this uh, rubbish we did with the with the Chinese issue which, which is probably going to bite us in the ass in the end we, we're not looking at what's happening COVID is still around us doesn't seem to have any plan or process going forward yet we have 100,000 cases a day at this point I think we broke some yeah. world record on Tuesday, on Monday. We were, uh, we, we went over 90 for sure. Did we go over 100? 94,000. 94,000 I saw. We are number two in the world in total cases now. 94,000 per day, highest record and we're obviously inching into 100,000 a day with uh, none of it getting reported at any Maybe that's the plan. Age. We get all the records so that, you know, our <laughs> name is high and the people are dead. But I, I think that's, maybe that's something. I don't know. The greatest uh, country in the world. Amit is checking up, by the way, because he likes his statistics. Yeah, I do. He's giving uh, us to the went down yesterday. Oh, so, 90, 88, 88, so it went to, from, let's see, 90 Listen, Amit, on the Only a complete idiot to listen to the show will take our statistics 000. as the finality. Considering we record one day, you download three days later. So Fair excuse point. me, we're sending people on a witch, witch hunt. What? 94,000? And that particular day when they listen to the episode is probably 11,000. <laughs> I love it. I hope that happens. Hmm. Uh, no, anyway, we actually so had a drop in, yesterday uh, in active cases. Now you've gone to these silly subjects like COVID. Let's get back to I Kangana. Know. Yes. Well, what can we say about Kangana? I, it's not. It's it's crazy that she would be She's talking clearly like that. A but huge support of the government. She's cure, clearly got political patronage. Yeah. But here, Maharashtra government is not covering itself with glory by picking exactly. on her. You know, no, they're not but at all. So blatantly. Blatantly. To, yeah, and suddenly you do blatantly. raids and all. Why? Because someone speaks yeah. against you. I mean, what are you? Are we stupid? Did we the raids are. only happen when someone speaks against the state or center government or whatever? But that's clear across the board. Now, whenever they see a media company getting too big for their britches, let's teach them a lesson. It happened in the case of NDTV. It happened in the case of Arnab. And it's happened in the case of I Kangana. think Donald Trump should come and study Indian markets properly. Politics and Indian political markets. And then he'll understand what to do with Stephen Colbert and the like, you know, when he goes back. There's been no raids. No reads. No. All these stand-up comedians are living well, in their mansions making comments. No, once no one's, one's reading them. Bill Maher there, is sleeping at night. Well, Bill there, Burr there, says what big, he wants. So there isn't... Uh, so so one of the big things that... Uh, one of the big no, he has to point out that I'm wrong. Damn no, it. No, no, you're not exactly wrong. It's not. He's not going after... You can't media, save it now. But he you went better after, go for the jugular. Huh. So it, lo- it feels like he's gone after Jeff Bezos, right? I mean, like uh, oh. wh- where uh, he owns the Washington Post, which has been one of the most foremost critics. Yeah, that's been going on for some time. And uh, there was a $10 billion plus Pentagon uh, contract, contract yeah. that they uh, out. Amazon yeah. and Microsoft were competing for and Club I think IBM contract. and uh, Oracle were in, in it as well. Uh, but it went to Microsoft and the assumption is that Donald Trump put his thumb on the scale, right? To get it to Microsoft instead of uh, Amazon. So that's, want to screw with Amazon. that's also a terrible punishment, I agree. The blatant punishments that we face where your home is raided and you know, you're sort of insulted yeah. and some people are sitting there for eight hours and find nothing. No, it's, just... it's, it's crazy. Why was Arnab? I mean, like, we're not, we're, as has been clear from this episode, none of us are Arnab fans, right? Yeah. But why the fuck was he in the police station for two fucking days? Clearly political uh, vendetta. I'm not yeah. saying it doesn't swing both ways. It does. We mentioned how the lane goes both ways in India. Yeah. Not a problem. You can, you know, there's no such no, thing as a one-way But, but road. that's just it, right? It's, it's on whenever the media so gets why do they large. behave like gangsters? Okay, politicians in, in the subcontinent, perhaps in many parts of the world. I just don't get the gangster thing. You've got the power. You don't have to... Someone is just talking against a policy or an issue or has a disagreement with the government you can't just I mean then what, there's no democracy Kim Jong-un is nice he's a nice guy he tells you clearly you say anything against me your parents will die your grandparents will die your kids will die in front of you and I may say the German Shepherd that's it 
He's very clear. Absolutely. You've got to respect that guy. Yeah. yeah. And, but I want he, Kim Jong-un to run the, the world. On the flip side of this Kangana thing though, now she has Y plus security. Yes, yeah, she does. That's true. There's, yeah, that's, there are 15 that's, people in India who have Y plus security. 15 people. Yeah, and, and apparently she can take them everywhere. Huh? Yeah, she can so, take them everywhere. That, that's so, what once again, like, just think now, COVID, they said we'll keep 25 people on the set, right? <laughs> Here comes the lead <laughs> actress with her 15 entourage just of commandos, huh? on top of which they have the other entourage. So she alone and the camera, and that's it. That's the maximum. And yeah. everybody else has to leave, as yeah. far as I can see. <laughs> All movies are just her and the commandos. Just her. Yeah. With a green screen and Arnob in the background shouting. I'll kill you. I'll support you. I'll support you. Sorry, so he's on the side. What am I saying? What did I learn from you? Did you watch that Arnav uh, clip? The Mujhe drugs do, Mujhe drugs do. Beautiful. Hash do, Mujhe. It was an audition for Narcos. Indian version. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Superb. He then mentioned all the whatever he's got in his uh, arsenal. I think Ganja, Charas, two three names came out also. I was quite impressed. Yeah. yeah. No, what I love about every time the media starts covering drugs is that they have no concept on how to do it right. And yeah. you'll just, you can find drugs here, here and here. Yeah. You can and they use the <laughs> drugs, no? The drugs word is not a beautiful word, it's just one big word. It's yeah. drugs, drugs. <laughs> and our mothers get scared. Yeah. Drugs, drugs. And they, and they list out yeah. the places where you can get it and what rates are going these days. It's like, dude, and what are you what turning into a menu Ashtak reporter who went into that uh, fellow's house, I forget the name, uh, I think Mr. Vichare, I read on the outside. And he went into the house and said, sir, what do you feel? And he asked him, how do you feel that your son is stuck in it? Or whatever, he said, how do you feel that your son is stuck in it? that he's telling him we're expecting it to be like a sports question and the father will say something like I'm so know? proud of my boy he started <laughs> that, Azad Maidan is an that guy says what Izzat says something Izzat says something and then bench out mother chot bench out it went down for 5 minutes and then he says something like I'm a boxer who I'm a boxer I mean what the this is journalism at its finest yeah. and then the guy comes out and gives a PTC about how the, the fellow is very upset of course his son is in jail. You're targeting the family name and you want him to come out and talk about... In 9th standard, he actually won elocution. Huh? He uh, said, boy stood on burning deck. Beautiful poem. Very, very good. Very talented poem. And we are very proud of him. After three years, we'll call him back home. What the fuck? I was reading up about this a couple of weeks ago, right? And uh, marijuana was legal in India up until 1984. It was made illegal with the push of the U.S. government yeah, at the time. Push, yeah. Uh, yeah, who they wanted it to uh, basically as part of the drug uh, war against drugs that they were having. They wanted other countries to kind of also make this illegal. Right. So it's something that's been illegal in this country essentially for about 35 years. Right. Yeah. Uh, and now all the countries which were at that time part of the war on drugs are now all making it legal. It's legal okay. all over Europe. It's legal in yeah. America. Uh, it's, yeah, Man, or... two days back, Pakistan legal, like decriminalized uh, cannabis and hemp production. There you go. Just two days back. So, well, I mean, like, so Bangladesh's you know, G- GDP is ahead of us. Uh, the, on moral and uh, social issues, Pakistan is sliding ahead. Uh, so now who are we with? Who, who's, ne- who's on our right or left? What country is left with us? Uh, us, Russia, China. Yeah. Oh, wow. Russia, where poison is available more than hemp and everything put together. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, actually, you know what? You're right, I guess. I mean, like, you know, it's probably better to get raided than poisoned, right? Yeah, that's true. And also the opposition in India, they can take heart from that. You know, see, at the moment, they only take our money and put us in jail for a little while. Nobody actually dies. Yeah. So, yeah. That's true. But that may, may be coming soon. We have no idea. By the way, guys, it's been one hour of talking. What the hell is that? Can we just quickly want to one huh. uh, quick fun, really funny topic from Philippines. Uh, it goes, Philippines government official caught having sex with secretary during Zoom meeting, fired from job. During <laughs> Zoom meeting? Yeah, yeah so basically, to... he put on a Zoom meeting, joined a Zoom meeting. And then forgot okay, to shut then, the visual. Huh. Yeah, exactly. So he thought, he, he even comes close to the camera, to the What do you mean PC by comes close? Switch... <laughs> no, no, <sorry. laughs> oh my God, that meeting is a disaster. He gets closer, he comes towards the camera to switch off the the camera and the audio, but I guess he doesn't do it. He doesn't end up doing it. He was so excited. Because, he uh, feather touched it and it didn't really work. Yeah, but, and then he goes to the corner of the room. But you know, like behind, you know what must have right happened? Frame. No, what must have happened is the others must have been so jealous and upset that their fucking Zoom meetings only them That's talking right, yeah. while he's got some, you know, <laughs> hot action going on on the side. His secretary. With his secretary. Male or female? Female. Female. Oh, why should that be an issue, yaar? We are all forward thinkers. Is kya hai? <laughs> <laughs> the crime is not pressing the, the, the button to, to shut the visual 
and keep but the audio would have gone that would have been even better no, if they so only was, heard sounds it was one That's of true. those things where you know you're you're listening to somebody talk and you're listening to a presentation or something like that so but i think listen, the audio I mean, wasn't there that's but, a bad story in the 21st century because now uh, the memes of that will go around philippines and the world that guy's finished right. or he'll become a superstar the porn industry will take he him he got fired from his government job he got fired he got fired, yeah, he got fired. also go. though why couldn't the people in charge of the meeting just remove him from the from the meeting If he's having sex, they didn't have to go watch it the entire forty-five minutes or whatever he was doing. It. He had sex for forty-five minutes. Wow! Eat in the Philippines. <laughs> uh, but no, what I'm saying wow, is, like, they, they fired him. They just muted him. This guy should be knighted from the meeting. Switch off his uh, video. You can just do that now on Zoom. Uh, you can, like, but then I'm like the person you who does that has it, to be the, the who the host thing. is. Let's say oh, you catch somebody. Antrish, who are you? Would you really? Would you, like, you become a virgin? <laughs> What's going on here? Um, look how boring our podcast is. If you are humping somebody in the background, obviously we stop for a minute and say, "Fuck the Disney bear conversation." Or oh, the damn GDP is going nowhere. And let's see silvery mounting a table of whatever. You know, uh, gender not to be questioned. <laughs> I mean, it'll be good for our show in a but, sense yeah. because we'll... shit. That that's a very like sort of noble and prudent way of looking at it, man. Why didn't they turn off the video? Shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, a poor guy. Man. How moralistic he became. Yeah, man. The man who smokes and drinks everything and lies to his parents on a daily basis. Uh, instead of standing up for that poor guy, because we all know we could have been that guy. You know, if, if he's just lucky yeah. enough to have a person interested in having sex with him, and obviously he got a little hot under the collar, couldn't think straight, yeah. didn't press the buttons properly because he was in a hurry. That's why the forty-five minutes I'm finding difficult. It seems like he was so no. aroused and happy. The forty-five minutes was just a number I threw out there. Could have been five. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's five minutes he'll never forget, one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, now yeah. that he's working in McDonald's and, and somewhere in Manila, be. neither will be. Yeah, but uh, this is not the first time something like this has happened, right? There have been a number of faux pas. I don't call the yeah. sex a faux pas. The faux pas is the machinery. It's it's, it's that's it. you know. I mean, let's be honest. But I'll put it this way, Amit. Uh, when we blame our cricketers and film stars for their sexual, uh, you know, conquests here and there, please understand if it happens to any of us normal, so-called conventional people, if girls throw themselves at you or or the opposite, depending what gender you are or whatever gender you are, preference you have, if they keep doing that, at some point you'll break. You will. It's just human nature. I, I just don't see how you won't. It will. It will. I yeah. Mean, like, I don't see how it. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I don't think that. Uh, uh, again, I don't think that there's an issue as long as it's. Uh, That's right. I mean, like, yeah, it's fine. Of course. Now he uh, has started a trend because the next time the same group meets for a Zoom meeting, they'll be blank stares, and you know, there'll be a lot of difficulty getting through yeah. the whole. God, <laughs> let's call him Rodney. I wish Rodney was here. <laughs> I mean, he really electrified the last one, and I mean, there was such a. What What are you going to discuss? Cyrus, what do you think about making this a TikTok challenge for government officials? Yes, but uh, sometimes our government officials may not be visually that uh, competitive, so to speak, and no, also it may, it may kill off. sex altogether as a also concept not. for many of us. Oh yeah, but then I don't know <laughs> because porn has spoiled us. You know, we all think now that oh, everybody looks like what we see, and, and then suddenly when you do get lucky, finally in the dark light, both you and the girl are so ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder light falls early in India. There must be a reason for that. Yeah. Sorry, brother. Uh, do we have? We haven't done a topic, have we? No, no, we done a few topics, but we just naturally ended up talking about them. Yeah. Because you keep We're... bringing sex in the boardroom and all, you know. I mean, that changes everything. And then Donald Trump always is interesting. That guy is so much fun. We want him back in power just so that we have things to talk about. He's thirty yeah. percent of the. GDP. Gossip, uh, gossip. Actually, yeah, you know, I mean, like, you know, that's all the points. Oh, I was sorry, by the way, guys. Uh-huh. If you're interested, the, of course. The Pope says, Pope says that gossip is worse than COVID. Okay. You ask someone who's dying of COVID, but they like to bitch about his neighbor or die. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just throw uh, it out is, there. Let us pedophilia rate on that scale. Oh, uh, you're not getting a visa to any Catholic country, my friend. You you stay in Gujarat. <laughs> Keep your problems. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you think about that gossip? Is in a way maybe because it all stems from gossip. Well, not really. No, in no way, dude. I mean, like, it, it, how, man? I mean, like, what is a deadly disease? I think what he was trying to say. Talking about uh, shit, dude. Translated from the local uh, Spanish, uh, I think what he was trying to say basically is that it spreads faster. Than, you know, it's more that the analogy. Ah, okay, how all the right. spread of vicious gossip, and I think it's got a lot to do with the forwards. That's true. And the WhatsApps of the modern world. So, in a sense, he's saying what we've been saying: we, the right wing there righteousness. Are, there are more media. people infected with justice for SSK than there are infected with COVID. I think that is true, right? I'm glad you called him SSK. Poor guy goes well, no, and dies. No, that's the hashtag, right? That's uh, the hashtag is justice for SSK. SSR. 
Oh, because, SSR, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a huge sorry, difference. Sorry, sorry. Don't do that. Sorry, 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 sorry. Panic. Republic TV will close down. We got the wrong guy! <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the way he sets it up with his gravitas, you know, or not into camera. Ladies and gentlemen, India will take it. No. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I, exactly. <laughs> really? God. Oh. Yeah. But it's this, in a way, you know, when we look back, it'll be, I mean, it's so terrible. With the, he's a nice guy who passed away and all that. And it's become a soap opera and all this, the sensitivity of what happened is just gone yeah. out of the window. But we look back at this time and we'll have a smile that Ornob and gang took us through COVID with this ridiculous soap opera, you know, which yeah. our mothers are party to. And now we've reached a point where we don't know what to do with our mothers. Like, Thank God they can't meet other people. Of course, the people will say the same thing. It's kind of true if you think about it, like, you know, just uh, what are the biggest stories in the last hundred years, right? They're all this kind of mix of like, Gossipy. you know, there's always this kind of uh, glamour component to it, right? Yeah. Uh, whether it's this, whether it was Jessica Lal, right? I mean, like yeah. Jessica Lal's story became as big as it did because she was a model, right? Yeah, if yeah. she was a random bartender. He was also the son of a, a chief minister and, a, you know, but it ranking. would never have come out if she was not well known. I, I, that was a point in time that was pre-social yeah. media that was a point in time when the internet was just coming into India that is a case where the Indian media has actually done a, the right thing sort of you know and yeah. shown the light in the right direction Nirbhaya also which uh -huh. came after that Correct. but for all these few good moments there's so many own goals yeah. and now they let him set the agenda are you people following it's a the vernacular channels are following okay forget the five English channels the Hindi channels and then all the vernacular channels I mean the, you can't do that he's no, setting the agenda for everyone and that's but, a little that's, sad. Does no one think no, that, differently? The, but that's always the nature of this stuff, right? I mean, like the media, is, what do they cover? It comes from what other people are covering, right? I mean, like, uh, so one of the things that uh, I find really fascinating, and this might get a little geeky or if you're non-media interested, right? But uh, I look at the travel of conversation in the US, right? One of the reasons why I looked at podcasting as a thing I wanted to do, right? Is because conversations in the US, especially political conversations, the agenda for them are set by talk radio hosts, Okay, they're set by them by talk radio hosts because and a part of it has to do with timing, a part of it has to do with how coverage is structured, a part of it has to do with the nature of the media itself, right? But Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, uh, on so the, it uh, on propels the, forward from that unit to all the other media outlets. From from there, that's where it moves, right? Absolutely, the talking points come from there. I'm not necessarily saying the points of view, hmm. yeah. but the topics come from there, right? Uh, all of these guys. So the topics are discussed on the radio in the afternoon, right? Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, Rachel Maddow, uh, James O'Donnell, all of liberal conservative, doesn't matter, but topics come from there. They go from there, they go into the nightly debate shows, the nightly kind of conversational shows that occur on cable news. They go from there into the newspaper editorial space. So basically... But you just ignored Oprah and Ellen. But the I mean, the like, knobs of that country. I mean, you know, true. I mean, Ellen dances through COVID. That is uh, true. And all the criticism that she's received from her staff. Okay, that blew up, right? That blew up. That blew up. Crazy. Yeah. See, you can't. I, I, I think of comedians today also. We have to worry about this, especially the next generation, because that's why uh, AIB not got into trouble in the end. You cannot be the everyman spokesperson. Put yourself out there like that, because you then because you're going to look perfect. Yeah. Sooner or later, something's going to drop. Yeah. I think from the beginning, established like that Chakravarti boy, that you know, you, you want to show dick pics to people and uh, you're alcoholic and you've got a drug issue and you had a child at 14. Once you do all that, I think you're safe. Because what can happen? You can only grow from there. No? You see, he's already fallen. Giravala and San, as they say. And then he grows up slowly from there. But otherwise, uh, Ellen, all too good to be true. She had it hard all her life. She was gay, had to come out of the closet, suffered, 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 and then turns out to be a monster. Uh, with people around her. So yeah. it's no longer about sexuality. It's just a normal human being who's not yeah. nice. Yeah. Ugh. Amit, what do you have to say? You're an Ellen fan. You have her posters in your room. You can't sleep without looking at her. <laughs> Not, uh, I, I, I'm not surprised by any of this, right? Because see, again, I also, uh, see, no, I haven't followed this stuff closely and I haven't heard of anything in the Ellen thing, which I found particularly trou troublesome as well, either. I thought, you know, she's a hard boss. She's not, not the most pleasant person to work for, but that's life. Sometimes some people are like that. And, you yeah. know, some people require that to succeed. And it's I mean, the like, second you know, chain of command after her who really taken it to another level. Right. Where she looked the other way. So that's the huh. issue also. After yeah. she, all she's the yeah. leader. It's like if you had uh, racist comments going on and you're the proprietor of your shop at the end of the day you have to be accountable you that's where that poor Tanmai got it in the teeth yeah. right it's not like he was responsible 
Yeah, no, that's true. That is true. But then that's also why it's important to kind of make sure that you have proper systems in place for all this kind of stuff, right? But I, I, again, you know, I mean, like, um, I don't want to sound like, you know, ah, those darn kids, but I mean, like, you know, at some level, I do feel like that sometimes, right? That I mean, like, you know, sometimes you have to deal with nastiness. Sometimes you have to deal with shit which you don't like. Oh, so you're saying don't be so soft. You don't be so soft, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, again, man, I've been watching a lot of Joe Rogan. <laughs> no female comic is going to come on to your show ever again, Amit. I'm just going to warn you. Huh? Sorry, Joe Rogan. No, because I mean, like, no. So I mean, like, I was watching the Joe Rogan thing, right? Again, and, and uh, uh, he had another guest on it with a professor who was talking about basically the generation that uh, was born, uh, the people who were born basically after the year 1995, right? People born after that. So they, these are about 25 year olds today. Silvery, right? you just missed the cut. You just missed the yes, cut. Yeah. yeah. But basically, people born after 1995 have never lived in a world without internet. Have never lived in a world without what social the media. Fuck. I hate those guys. I hate them all. I hate them so much. But uh, one of the things oh, that he mentioned which I thought that. was really interesting, right, was that um, what what's happened is that post-95, you've seen this kind of preponderance of call-out culture. Right. Call-out culture yeah. is true on the internet in a way that it never was Absolutely. in personal life, right? right? But you try and call people out. So now if you have a disagreement with somebody at work, right, with somebody who is part of this culture, now, the chances of them bringing it up to you personally and saying, hey, I had a problem with this. Can we deal with this like that are lower than the chances of that. So no out of court settlement, offline settlement, up. everything yeah. is in your face. It blows up. The yeah. whole, whole world has to see, particularly in Manila, where the poor guy was having sex for four and a half minutes, as we established <laughs> with his yeah. underage secretary, who may be male, female and horizontally challenged. But that's not the issue. No, it was recorded for posterity. To what Amit was saying about, about the kids after 95 and social media and all of that, I think what they are also not putting up with is sort of performative niceness, right? If you're right. not nice, just don't be nice. We're okay with that. Like, nobody right. expects Joe Rogan to be a nice person, right? Or right. Was whatever he is. And they take He's him not- for- yeah, fair enough, huh? Right. But when Ellen does this whole performative niceness and, and giving things yeah, away and all of that's that. Good. And that's good. That's good, Vinny. Can I borrow that phrase? I'm writing it down. Performative <laughs> niceness. <laughs> yeah. behind, when you, look, you know, scratch the surface and, and see what's, what's actually going on there and her, her own team is suffering and people are not, not looking out for each other, that is what rankles, right? I don't think we're accusing her of being oh you're a racist or you're, or you're something like that but hey you're you're as fake as the rest of them but and so what's wrong with that I mean like when you you're defending her for no reason let me explain to you the problem is they put themselves on a high horse yeah. no? they act like and then they're, they're the woman's icon of the, of the this decade and all you know and my, but, my daughter follows her has been following her she's 13 years old and there but, are many across the world it's not just an American thing Ellen is uh, uh, you know she's a woman icon a lot of people look up to her uh, yeah. of both genders actually but so I, I, I find the feet, it of, the feet of clay issue is the problem, you know. I, no, but of I find it extraordinarily naive to think that what you see of somebody on television is who they really are. No, but no, no. See, we, we don't mind the faults yeah. if, if we knew them. That's the thing. Like Joe Rogan, his point is Joe Rogan. You know, is a bit brash. He's very strongly opinionated. There's not much that's going to scare you after that. You know, so you're into you you into it. You know what what the guy is. This is like an arranged marriage where they tell you she's you know uh, five foot nine and she's going to be five foot six. Uh, you know, lovely figure and she's actually got a pot belly and double chin, uh, long hair, but she's actually bald with hair on her chin. You know, so when you think about all these things, you, you're just looking at a. Uh, it's like a whole Pandora's box of yeah. exposure. Yeah. So and Ellen has gone and, from and, being really. Ellen, I mean, to me. Uh, um, just to take up from what Sarah is saying, Ellen sells that performative niceness woke dream that yeah. that everyone of course she does. Into, right? Dance, dance, dance. The huh. fucking world is falling apart and she gets up there and says, come on, all of us, we have no problems, this dance will feel better, which is nice if that's really her. Yeah. But the truth is when the camera is off, she's saying, get these fuckers out of my face. I don't want any of these people <laughs> next to me. I was like, you know, but I, I, I appreciate it because I remember my friend Kunal telling me he grew up at uh, Kennedy Bridge and the ladies of pleasure there. They would always tell him, Chalichol, jaldi karo. Time nahi hai either. <laughs> no, because he would come and stay and not pay, which is really wrong. So they didn't have the performative niceness. I prefer them. It is a pleasure. Kennedy Bridge. Our generation, boys, I don't think Silvery will ever, I don't know what's their Kennedy Bridge right now. If it's the same ladies, the pleasure is all mine. <laughs> 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 you know, they used to call us, we used to drive by, you know, Amit, you guys did this. We used to just get really, really horny 18 year olds, drink a little and drive past uh, because of the red light area, because they'll stand and look out of the window and stand on the bridge sometimes. And then we would stop for a second as you get more guts and go, look at you and go, hey, Chikna. So I my friend Vikram, he, put his, he put his face yeah. out and goes, call Chikna. For, and she did it in a way, just slightly like, I like you. Hey, Chikna. Half, you know, deprecate, sort of mean and half, whatever. And then, 
After that, we couldn't. We had to call him Chikna after that. You know, just, <laughs> this entire manhood went for a toss. Chikna, <laughs> how oh, they destroy our reputation. AMA time with yes. Silvery. Hi everybody, welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Intel, for coming back to us. We love our sponsors. If you'd like to be one of them, do reach out. So, really, really cool week on the network this week, right? Started off with a bang. Abhijit Panganguly was on Cyrus Says. Funny comedian. I think you guys will enjoy that. We had Dimanth Parekh on Advertising His Dead. Dimanth, the founder of Better India. Govind Raj Athiraj is also on Uncle Please Sit this week. That's a really fascinating show, which they talk about fake news. On The Habit Coach, there was a crossover event with Aditi Surana from Absolutely Right. I think you definitely enjoyed that. And last but not least, definitely a show I'd love you all to check out. We have a new show called This Round is on Me. It's hosted by Gauri Devi Dayal. If you remember, Gauri and I worked on a show together called The Kolaba Cartel a while ago. Fun show. If you haven't checked that out, do check that out. But this is a show where she's talking to a lot of different people in the food space. Her first guest is Harsh Mariwala, legend in his own time. I think you really, really enjoy that show. With that, let me get you back to your show. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Board Brocha. I'm so bored. I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just, just, just follow me. All right. Uh, the first one comes in from Riddhi Bora. This is something that we already. Talked about in quite a lot of detail, but I'll just read through it because uh, so that Riddhi Vora gets her question on the air. Uh, goes, uh, Riddhi Vora asks, uh, Hello, Cyrus, Amit Sivari, and guest. I see that Cyrus loves talking about the SSR Riya Chakrabarti case. I agree that it's all distractions from bigger issues. Apparently, I read this uh, Riya told the NCB that Sushant was a habitual marijuana smoker. So what? So many people smoke or have smoked marijuana that it seems like a waste of time even exploring that thread. At times when countries all over the world are legalizing and decriminalizing, our law enforcement and media are still vilifying a substance that most agree is even less harmful than alcohol or coffee. Are we still being regressive or is this just a part of media halabalu about nothing? We have talked about all of this. You know, know, Riti, the the way I see it is that we can't help it as human beings. The most intelligent of us, Stephen Hawking, whoever, all will turn towards gossip and all this. That's why the pastry culture is alive. I remember when the Bombay Times first started, I I would start reading it and then I had to stop myself physically reading it because otherwise I would have to read it, you know. I had to actually say, okay, no, this is like drugs. I can't read this. And because you can't get up in the morning and discuss Priyanka Chopra had two bananas today and that is the secret to her skin. I'm like, this is not information I should ever have in my head because this it's, it's not only painful, it's better to take cocaine or crack or whatever and, you know, and have that experience and then have these ridiculous conversations about celebrities for the rest of your life. So, I, but I think we can't help it. So if we get sunk in into that, we can't stop ourselves. It's like the, as the Gujarati gentleman from Ahmedabad told me, Vareed, not you, it is like Titanic. Once you're in, you sink. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, let me tell you about uh, Titanic because my daughter was uh, studying it. How many people survived? M- Mayu? Lots survived. Huh? Nobody tells you that. No, she's yeah, refusing to talk. We know now. I mean, like, remember Kate Winslet survived. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was rooting for DiCaprio, no? That's why it was a tragedy. Why did... James Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, so I was okay. ranting about gossip and how we uh, gravitate towards it. Amit, what's your view? Uh, no, it's what we so do. So why does man. it sell? Why, why, why does it happen? We're, uh, because uh, uh, there's an evolutionary reason. I'm going to get boring again, but there's an evolutionary short, reason for gossip. The thing is that when it becomes long, no? huh. because our attention span is not there anymore. Okay. Our so there's an evolutionary die, reason huh? for gossip. News media is a very uh, relatively recent uh, phenomenon, uh, invention in the world, right? But before that, how did people find out about what was going on in the world? Or what was going on around in their communities? Because nobody gave a shit about the world. They cared about the 50 people they knew about. Right. And so we are evolutionarily kind of uh, predisposed towards gossip. There are linguistic studies around this. Right. See, I did it short. You did short, but also what you mentioned here is the WhatsApp chat actually originates back in the day from the 11 people who are friends. Yeah. And you start the malicious gossip from there. And then one of the 11 has a common friend in the next village. And that goes, the forward happens. So we should not blame WhatsApp. It's been there. Technology is called WhatsApp. Yeah. So right. technology is... friends. Huh. Yeah, are you, correct. Uh, talk about friends and hello friends. friends not, the, is, not the TV show. <laughs> yeah, not you, the TV show. Not hello okay, friends no, and friends oh, comparison. By the way, I, saw, I saw all episodes. episodes. Hello friends. Yeah. Then you grew the beard. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife and I sat and we saw every single episode. 
my poor friend Kunal has been defending it. He, because he <laughs> thought that it wasn't that bad. I saw it again. I said, yeah, okay, fine. You were younger. <laughs> you can take that. <laughs> it was it was nineties and TV. You're blameless, Cyrus. You guys are blameless. Yeah, I think I'm blameless, <laughs> and I'm really blameless because I paid no attention. Absolutely. It was exactly like this podcast. I did not pay attention to what he said. I never saw the videos. I never learned the lines. I did everything last minute. You know, and all I looked at is the clock for leaving, like I do everywhere for the rest of for the, for the start of my childhood. Yeah, really. So I don't think my parents had this gender announcement. Uh, by the way, uh, the, the one Parsi doctor, Doctor Motafram, pulled me out of my mother's womb, left me on the table. My dad said, "Oh fuck, another kid," and life started. That's it. What you're saying? That's when your father realized he was having a kid. <laughs> yeah, you don't know Parsis. <laughs> Some don't know for years. <laughs> okay, last okay. one. Chalo. Yeah, so uh, next one is uh, fifty million dollars is the subject of this. It says uh, come, comes from Avisha Javeri. She asks, "Hey Cyrus, love, love, love your podcast. I can hear you all day long. I have I was googling some Bakra episodes. Say that again. I came... <laughs> uh, he says I can hear you all day long. I was googling some Bakra episodes and I came across a post which said you are one of the top fifty richest celebrities in India well, and you're worth Cyrus fifty Rocha million US dollars." Worth. See, there's humor which is appreciated and there's humor which is downright abusive. So when people say you're one of the richest people in the world and we're struggling to put food on the table, I think that's just abusive. You know, when you say you're a bad comedian or I hate you all, hello, friends sucks or whatever, that's fine. This is really mean. I find this very personally invasive. According to the internet, you made uh, 1,500 rupees during the course of this comment. (laughs) <laughs> possibly. <laughs> possibly yeah but it after taxes is much less 19 dollars per minute you make basically you talk for a minute you make 19 dollars so, so this is what tells you about the internet you, why did you put other things out there about us which you know just just for the sake of it just say that i won the french open three times you know let's see how it, i just give me things whatever you didn't achieve in your life you know captain india for 12 years most successful indian test captain ever won the mr india in 1974 then reappeared in 89 when he was 25 years old you know whatever give me give me i want i want great glory uh fought in the indo Pakistan war, 65, 71, started a war with Pakistan and stopped it himself in four minutes in 78. Oh, come on, I want stuff. I want stuff out there. Silvery, what, what lies are there about you on the internet? Uh, He's the first my name is Silvery. Silvery. <laughs> my name is Silvery. Firstly, is one well, of Antarik, just, you know, for a 27-year-old who looks 22 with a beard that's been pasted on him by one of our theater uh, makeup gurus, you, you, that kind of makeup, you know it's a beard. You know, that, that's the whole idea of that makeup. It, yeah. Why did you get a real beard? Why do you put this crappy thing on? Uh, it just it helps with uh, the ladies, man. So the ladies like it. What ladies, Baba? So There's one lady in Indonesia. It's a quality. You're a quality man, not a quantity man. No, just enjoy the life. Yeah, you, but you can't have it both ways. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, oh Acha, there's a trade embargo, yeah, yeah. is it? Wow. So, yeah. so once she goes to Indonesia, you're on your own, bitch. Take that back. Take that back. So uh, are you still seeing her? Yeah, I'm still seeing her. Oh, but don't want to give more information. Suddenly, quiet. The comedian goes Man. quiet. No, I don't want to discuss this. My, my, my parents listen to this oh, podcast. Oh, damn it. No parents. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. We have one more question. Very short one. Okay, quick. Want. Otherwise, okay. Uh, hey, Cyrus. Can you talk about your experience with Raghav Bhal and Rajdeep? Raghav Bhal. You're fans, a Punjabi, no? You know how to pronounce the, the name. But, what kind of Punjabi is that? B-H-A-L. B-H-A-L. But it's pronounced yes. Bell. No, that's B-E-H-L, no? Bell? B, no, Bal. Uh, B-H-L. Bal is B-L. Yeah, There's B-L, no B-H-L. B-L. Think of, oh. What helps is to, to think of it in Hindi because it's huh. a Hindi okay. surname. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that helps sometimes. So, so now Bal. we find a compromise as we Indians oh, yeah. always do. It's between Ba and Ben. It's Ba. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bell. It's, it's Raga Bell, right? Oh, by the way, he Raga wrote Bell. one of the finest books on China, Indo-Chinese policy and the China as an empire and economic growth and all that off China way back in the day. Huh? And he was a hardcore BJP stalwart, uh, sort of, you know, had, had one of the great uh, spokespersons for the party growing up. I mean, in the early days, in the 90s. Yeah. And then how this whole thing changed where he's like, the government seems to be after because, him. They won't let him... Start a television channel, yeah. He's got two cha- channel licenses pending. I, we have to investigate this whole thing. Up, no, at this point. They've given up. They've tried and tried and tried. Yeah. But I have to give him his due. He's, he's been a fa- For me, he's been one of the great visionaries of Indian media. There's no question about that. I got yeah. to meet him in 96 when we were shooting for MTV U, one of the legendary shows that nobody ever saw. I'm king of that. I've got so many shows nobody ever saw. But um, 
you know, at that time it was a small TV18 office and all, but he was a real visionary. He put together the first financial channel. He put together, I mean, ours was what? From where to where? From financial channel to this. He was, uh, you know, all about politics and uh, social uh, ramifications of politics and all that. That was his real thing, but he still did MTV and other shows on the side. I'm sure he's not proud of roadies, but uh, everything else. So he, he's the guy who invented the wheel, so to speak. Yeah. And in but the media, a, a, there's a lot of respect. He got involved with MTV quite late in the day, right? I mean, no, no, no. Uh, my first show that I did with them in '96, uh-huh. when we relaunched, we when MTV relaunched, uh-huh. and we started with the Indian VJs and all back in '96 April. So he, he was doing quite a few shows, about three or four shows. TV18 produced. That's how they built their thing. That and the Cadbury uh-huh. Five Star with Mini Mathur or something. Show and tell. Uh-huh. Three, four shows. Then they had that Vakala, then the fiction shows. So he was doing everything, the whole gamut. But my finest moment was I used to go to Delhi to shoot a lot. And then as usual, no one was ready. So I'm sitting around and apparently Mahesh Mathai or something who had to give a lecture had not turned up. He had, okay. because he had this, launched this TV Academy also, which is a great money-making option. People pay lots of money and uh, you pretend to give them work, which will never happen. Uh, so they said, will you go and do the lecture? I was 24 years old. Huh? <laughs> so I had to give a lecture on filmmaking Never made a film Television was on loosely on for two months on MTV And uh, the media Which I had no idea about I, I had a very pleasant experience for 45 minutes Because I just I mean they bought everything These were yeah. 20 people who paid lots of money Who are never going to actually work in the line Because they're extremely rich But the parents said at last they're going out So let them go So I had a great time And I filled in but yeah, he was, he was, I think he's a great entrepreneur, no doubt about it. I just don't know what went wrong in those last few years when this government came uh, uh, on top in the first election. His whole career just, his whole life changed. It, it, after he started the Quint, right? After his so Quint, Quint happened later then because then he was pushed out. No, he was nosed right. out. Mukesh Bhai took over the company. Right. And um, it seems they just fell out of favor with the present government. And not clear exactly why, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll have to investigate that. But you cannot deny what he's done. And everybody who's working in TV today of my generation will have had some contact with TV18 somewhere. 100%. So, yeah. I forgot to mention that question was sent in by Omkar Krishna. And the final part of his question is, who is your favorite contemporary journalist, Indian and international? Oh, that's an interesting, interesting question. question. Smirkonish for sure not. Um, it's tough. Let me think. Indian it journalist. is tough. Well, I like, I like Ayaz. Is, uh, even when he uh, writes for non-cricket, right. I think he's an absolutely spot on in his views, at least for me. He's a great journalist. He's a great yeah. writer. Yeah. No, even on polit- politics, philosophy, yeah. on, you know, so I, I like him. But I'm trying to look at the Americans, the Maureen Dowds and all, who are all very interesting. But not, not one of them really stands up as oh, tough. Amit, you're the guy. Give uh, us a journalist. So, in India, I like reading Pratap Bhanu Mehta a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That's an interesting one for me. Uh, Internationally, I don't know, man. I'm trying to think right now, and I've gotten so kind of podcast centric these yeah, last that's true. We the written so word. Much. Let's not lie. We hardly read. We only read how many died today. No, I read, yeah. but I don't. Uh, I I don't feel like uh, like you know. There was a time a few years ago where I would read certain columnists in Indian and uh, international press, no matter what, right? Yeah. I had specific RSS feeds set up for each of these people, so I would like you know, as soon as Veer Sangvi or Shekhar Gupta or uh, Pratap Bhanu Mehta or uh, Swapandas Gupta or any of these guys had an article out. I would read it immediately, right? I'm not in that space anymore. I don't feel like I do that anymore. And the same thing with international. I read like most of the Times columnists, Washington Post columnists. I was a big fan of Michael Kinsley, who was the original uh, editor for Slate. And before that, he was a longtime editor of the New Republic. Do you read The Spectator? Uh, I've read The Spectator, but I don't read it regularly all that often. I don't read Andrew Sullivan that much as much as I used to. I like Thomas Friedman, though. I and like I Thomas Friedman, yeah. but I also... But yeah, I know what you're saying. The one that sings from the book and you're like, wow, every word. Yeah. But as a young man, I, I really liked uh, Khaled Ansari when I was Khaled very young. Ansari was a good writer. Yeah. And not just some sports. Again, yeah. they had the ability to write from sports and, and take it yeah. off from there, you know. Yeah. You start yeah. with yeah. a match and from there, the ramifications of that would go to everything else. I'm which is also forgetting the name of this, uh, this writer who writes about a lot of offbeat sports, right? There's this article called Deliverance from 48,000 Feet about climbing Everest and he's written this stuff about Alaska speed tunnels collapsing and sports in there. So he's a sports writer but writes about human stories. I'm absolutely forgetting his name. Um, but... That's something that, that we should check out for sure. Um, and, and if there's any listeners uh, on Tyrus Show that like football, there's this guy called Barney Roney and Raphael Honigstein. If you like really like reading football, those two guys that you should check out for sure.
Um, hey, like even like you know, so my uh, my favorite sports writer used to be Bill Simmons, but now I listen to him on a podcast. I don't watch. I, I, he doesn't write anymore, right? So I mean, like, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it, the world has changed. I think. I mean, like, I, I I feel like I read more, but I read more in long form, and I don't care about the authors as much anymore. Yeah, I also read, but I don't remember the damn authors. I'm just trying to mm-hmm. remember because I, I I do read, I, but I read from the high headline. The headline's oh. interesting. I get into the the column, right. not generally from the writer. In the old days, you want to read the writer's piece. Yeah. Okay, we've talked too much about this damn question. This question should be banned. Put it on a blacklist <laughs> and never ask it again because it exposes our lack of reading. <laughs> all I can think of is the eighties when all I had was reading. Silvery, shall we uh, can it? It's been a very yeah. long and painful journey for I think uh, Mr. Mr. Kanobar is uh, not even. Are you okay, sir? Um, you, shut, you pull the curtain. Parda ke biche kya hai? Are you telling us <laughs> if it turns out to be some mother-in-law who's been tied up and hidden there? I'll I'll expose you. I'll expose you on a nine o'clock English news channel. Oh shit! Now I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm scared. But no, it's just it's just my kitchen that has some undone dishes which I will now go and do because we're still not letting people into our house. <laughs> But that you should anyways not allow people in the house even post COVID. I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah. Why do people just arbitrarily in India? The doors are open. They just walk in all the time. Right. I hate it when a vendor walks in with a bill and he's from the fifth floor and he's here and then it takes five minutes to explain the situation. <laughs> he just walks in because my mother doesn't lock doors or shut doors. Really? Yeah, just just need Zoom calls for everything, man. I you know I've got a lot of angst against my mother between that uh, no, uh, Goswami and the doors and uh, let me go deal with her right now. <laughs> Mom, pack your bags. <laughs> okay, guys, it's been wonderful. <laughs> see ya. Bye bye from Cock and Bull. All right. See you guys. Bye. 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 Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you. We need you. Send us your questions on Twitter on Cyrus Says In, or you can email us, even if you're not female, on what Cyrus Says at gmail dot com. Have you ever wondered how successful people do their thing? How do they navigate the challenges they often face? Are you wondering about the future of restaurants, film, education, technology, and everything else in between? Hi, I'm Gauri Devidyal, best known for being one of the brains behind the table, an award-winning restaurant in Bombay. One thing my life as a restauranter has given me is the opportunity to meet with some truly inspiring people, most often just by chatting with strangers at the community table. And that's what this podcast is about. It's about learning the new dimensions of business and understanding how different people swim this sea. It's an opportunity for me to pick their brains and ask them all the questions on my mind, whether it's about learning from their past experiences or talking about future trends. Through their journeys, stories, and insights, I hope you too, like me, will come away inspired and energized. So come, join me every Wednesday with your favorite drink because this round is on me. Are you constantly seeking happiness? Wondering how to make the most of every day? How not to let your inhibitions stop you from achieving your goals? It's now time to get your A game on. It's time to unlock your true potential. Tune in to the empowering series with me Zarina Poonawala to feel empowered in all genres of life. From behavioral skills to management skills, from health to relationships, from mental well-being to emotional well-being and of course your finances i've got you covered with these tips and tricks from me zarina and true life stories from my amazing guests you're bound to bring your purest to the table tune in to the empowering series with zarina punawala every thursday on the ivm podcast app website or wherever you listen to podcasts